czego wyjechałam z Polski do Norwegii. Nie znudziło mi się życie w Polsce, co to to nie. Tomek po miesiącu stwierdził, że wyjeżdżamy do Norwegii. Tu jest super, mówi. To jest fajnie, tu jest super. Mówi, trochę zimno, ale jedziemy. Przywiodła mnie tutaj miłość, a nie praca. Nie miałam jakichś specjalnych marzeń. Takim, może nie marzeniem, ale taką właśnie nadzieją na to, że, że będę miała jakoś godziwe życie, że może wreszcie nie będę samotna, że będę miała tą bliską osobę koło siebie, gdzie wieczorami, kiedy już się nic nie chce, człowiek może nawet nic nie mówić, po prostu się przytulić i, 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 i zasnąć. I tego mi było trzeba najbardziej, po prostu. Da się odczuć, że jako Polka jestem traktowana inaczej, jest ode mnie wymagane więcej, pensja zawsze jest mniejsza. Nawet mi to zostało powiedziane, że powinnam pracować więcej. Ja to owszem tutaj zaprojektowałam, ale chłopaki na zbrojarni, Polacy wykonali elementy, Polacy na produkcji zrobili formy, wylali i później kolega kierowca, również Polak, dowiózł yy, do tunelu te elementy. Także generalnie ten tunel od początku do końca jest cały polski. Wszystko co osiągnęłam do tej pory w bardzo krótkim czasie, to osiągnęłam właśnie dzięki samej sobie, dzięki temu, że się nie bałam, że, że próbowałam i że, że, że kontaktowałam się z ludźmi, głównie z Norwegami. Kontakt z rodziną nie straciłam, dlatego że mam kontakt telefoniczny. Pracuję w przedszkolu z dziećmi, mówię, a dzisiaj jadę do babci, albo moja babcia dzisiaj do mnie przyjedzie. Moje dzieci tego nie mają. This trip has changed my life forever. As a doctor, I travel abroad to try to help those living in refugee camps. I met people with broken souls from many years of war. I heard stories of conflicts and concerns, pain and problems, hope for healing and dreams of peace. How can we stop this unnecessary despair? They say they have no friends by the mountains, but my heart was heavy to lift in a drift. When you say your prayers and think how you can help the world to be a better place, think of the hundreds of thousands of refugees and displaced people from war. Think of Kurdistan and don't forget them. Tremendous flash of beauty became beginning of universe. But it says, love appeared. His sculpting was tied directly to his singing. And it was the first time we, or I, had ever heard him speak in Farsi. I didn't think of Daddy as an artist. He was just simply Daddy. I knew he was a scientist. And then I knew that he made these things. The things that he saw, where do you really saw that? I don't think you can do it looking into a, a microscope. During those formative two years, he wasn't a presence in the family. And mommy was, you know, everything. She taught us by example. 
the sense that there was this constant greater thing. You know, then Mary Jane got in such a shape that I had stopped. And you see how I stopped in the middle of it, I just stopped. It is difficult to live with someone that you love and you see him physically, biologically destroyed a bit every day. I was going to make a lot of statues. <laughs> Love appeared and put fire to existence. Isn't it something? Bože, zgreši smo, zaluta smo, postrada smo. Žele smo slobodu, postato smo robovi. Tražili smo visine, survani bismo na dno. Oči naše iskaše svetlost, obavi nas tama. Ima smo silu veliku, darove mnoge, umove britke, prelepa lica, glasove zvonke, kose negovane duge. Ima smo reči smele, počesto drske, manire fine, ali po najviše nosi smo rane, tuge i boli, kojih ni sami najčešće ne bismo svesni. A sve ljubavi radi, koju traži smo svuda, samo ne u tebi, samo ne u tebi. Isuse, tugo moja, Isuse, mladosti moja, jedina radosti moja, oprosti. Ti večnost u snu i spavanju. Welcome everybody to Inspire TV Live Talks. Hello. Yes, hello. Hello, hello. Welcome to 11th Bridges International Film Festival. There are some lovely ladies with us. Uh, today and uh, with their films participating in the festival. So, uh, Kim Polo, you represent uh, Don't Forget Them. And, hello. Uh, Liv hello, welcome. And Liv Thank Akili you. And Eric Hopper comes uh, for Wild Heart, My Wild Heart. Yes, thank okay. you. Thank you for having yeah. us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for, for setting wonderful films in the festival. Um, so, uh, Erin, would you like uh, to introduce your co-director, <laughs> Lili Vakili, yes. and tell us about uh, this uh, collaboration and uh, the inspiration to, to document uh, the story of an artist? Absolutely, my pleasure. Um, yeah, and I think I will let Lily sort of uh, give us her short synopsis. I am uh, a co-director along with Lily Vakili, who is also the producer of the film and the daughter of Nader, who is the, the main subject of our film, who we filmed and spend a lot of time with. Um, and so it's sort of a, it started as a family project with for Lily um, in a way, just because she is related to Nader and a story that a rich and deep story uh, that she wanted to tell. And she brought me on later to the project, but I'll let Lily tell you a little bit about it since it's been close to her heart for a very long time. Thanks, thanks, Erin. So, you know, uh, we started this project or I started this project now about uh, six, six and more years ago. And the, um, you know, the initial impetus to, to make the film uh, had to do in part because of the decline in health of my mother, 
who was always a muse for my father and, uh, and very much the, um, you know, the mistress of ceremonies in terms of supporting the work he was doing, sharing his work with all of us children. And she was, uh, she was suffering from Alzheimer's and uh, was kind of receding from us. And as that happened, kind of the importance of, of trying to tell the story, a family story that is also an art story, but fundamentally, as Aaron has reminded me so many times, a love story, uh, the importance of telling it became, it was just um, essential for me. And as the process evolved, uh, you know, there were many participants, many hands, uh, many hands, as you see my father's hands behind me in the, in the uh, poster, many hands made this film. But bringing Aaron on board was a, um, was a wonderful kind of, you know, uh, coincidence and, and opportunity to take the film beyond um, the family to kind of a, a different territory of exploration of art and inspiration, persistence, uh, you know, um, hope in a, in a certain way. But I'll let Erin speak to that because she has her own views. Yes. Um, yeah, you have, yes, a, adding. you have a question. Yeah, well, I was, um, I knew the cinematographer that, that Lily was working with and actually Lily has, is a musician, is in a band and I've even shot some footage of her concerts. So I sort of knew Lily a little bit as, you know, fellow artists, but um, I knew she was, I saw a short version of this film um, that was shot and edited by my dear friend who's, uh, you know, a colleague, a filmmaker. And he, he felt that the project was needed to grow and expand, or I think Lily actually thought the project needed to grow and expand, and he wasn't really willing to take on the next, um, the editing of the long form. So that's when I came in to the project and I just asked to watch all of the footage. So I watched every minute of the footage um, before. And at that point I was just con um, being considered as an editor. And so after watching all of the footage, I feel like I found, I found the heart of the story for sure. It was there and it was inspiring me to work on it. But I also knew that we needed to shoot more footage to fill in some missing gaps. So then pretty quickly, I felt like I was taking on um, a little bit of a directorial role. I mean, Lily is an incredible mu artist as a musician, as a visual artist. She hadn't um, made a long form film before um, from a director's perspective. She's a wonderful producer also. <laughs> um, but I think that also when you're in, you're inside of a family and telling a family with six siblings and a, and, and her father, it's, she needed an outside perspective to sort of give a different view of kind of the universal interest. So it didn't become this sort of just family puff piece, but something that could reach many people. And, um, so I think we worked together to find a, a find the heart of the story and the structure that would um, kind of move this away from like family history to like a larger uh, film to reach more a wider audience. So that's sort of how I got involved. Thank you for sharing with us. And we, have, we didn't forget Kim Polo, <laughs> who is the producer of uh, Don't Forget Them. Um, how the, the director uh, chose you to be uh, his producer, Kim, um, or who chose him, or you chose the director? How this um, I kind of, well, I was the producer, writer, and editor, and um, I really wanted to tell the story, and I just kept looking for the right people to help me to create it. Uh, it was my first documentary, so I was new at things, and I, I had all the you know, the passion and, and I knew what I wanted to do, but I needed some help <laughs> from, from other people who had, who had um, uh, different skills. So um, I think it was about five years learning about the topic and following an organization who was working with the refugees that, is, that are in our film. I knew 
I had, um, you know, contacts and friends and I knew the stories and I just, it got to the point where I just really wanted to put it together to make a film to raise awareness, um, specifically the refugees who are living in Kurdistan. So um, just trying to get the message out, show people a personal side of people who are, who are suffering yeah. In that yeah. Area of the May world. I ask you what brought you to the topic? What what was the you speak of the passion about it and you know that being the driver? What what brought you to that subject? Um I so I I studied international relations and I was in the Peace Corps in the Middle East mm -hmm. and then I got married and had children and was interested in photography and filmmaking and YouTube and things like that. And it just kind of kept building. I kept being interested in the Middle East. And, and then I had friends and family who were working specifically in this region. So it was sort of from a distance, constantly being interested in following it. And then it got to the point where I was so close to it and it was so emotional for me that I just wanted to, I wanted other people to hear the story, so. Uh, uh, did you know how are you related with a director Kamaran Karim and why you you chose him to do this uh, film? We you? chose him. He he's in England actually, and he flew to Kurdistan and met um, the doctor who's the in the picture there. <laughs> he he flew there. He had the language. He's a um, great cinematographer. And he was able to communicate with the people. He knew the region, he's from there. So it just, it worked out. I couldn't go, I was in America. So we just had to collaborate and it was great. Okay, so you knew his work. Uh, yes. From the past, okay, nice. Uh, and uh, Lily, you have a career as a musician. <laughs> we watched the beautiful uh, clip <laughs> on YouTube with you rocking. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, Petra mentioned that, and I was like, "Oh yeah, that's that's another part of my life." You know, one of the things I love about this conversation, um, and here we are, you know, four women talking about life. Uh, it, you know, we have so many aspects to our lives. I know that at least looking at uh, the three of us that I know have kids, because Kim, you just mentioned, mm -hmm. um, you know, we carry so many different, um, we, see the, we see life th through many different lenses and some of them are from a professional perspective. Um, some of them are from an artistic perspective. Some of them are driven by our family connections. Some of them are driven by our role as caregivers uh mothers and other types of caregiving and um i i think that that is also what drives an intense desire to collaborate you know so as you mentioned kim you know and as aaron mentioned i did not have a great deal i didn't have any experience with a long form documentary mm -hmm. And you realize at a certain point that the passion drives you and drives you. Yeah. It, it, it's what's essential to get the deal, the project, the music, the art, whatever it is done. But you need to collaborate mm -hmm. with people who are experienced professionals who bring their own perspective and really enrich a project. Mm -hmm. And I know that certainly I, that's one of the things I just loved about working with Aaron was the uh, the the complexity of thought and the generosity of thought and then being able to work together which is you know not always easy <laughs> but that it's worth it it's worth it in the end yes and um, yes it's good it's nice what uh, you mentioned about the uh, woman life that uh, are mothers or do they care of uh, family, uh, probably pa uh, older parents, and uh, they have also their art uh, in order to express themselves and uh, to find ways to communicate and uh, spread out messages, perhaps, uh, to the rest of the world. So this is what I think <laughs> the three of you are doing in your life. 
and uh, Erin also, um, I read that your biography or th that uh, you 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 had something very special with Sundance. You 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 were head of a program. Can you talk about that a bit, please? You can unmute yourself also. <laughs> Yeah, speaking of kids and dogs in the background, <laughs> I give myself yes. an, the opportunity. Um, so pardon any background noise when I'm not muted. Um, actually, I, we, I had a film that went to, to Sundance. Um, I was a producer of that film and it was a narrative, uh, uh, a narrative feature. So very different than documentary, like a whole, yeah, I, I definitely dance between the world of narrative and documentary for sure. So, um, so yeah, that was an amazing experience. <laughs> it's always fun to go to Sundance. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that uh, since then, and I've been a lab, a screenwriting lab finalist and um, planning on applying to the episodic lab this coming year and with a new series that I'm writing. Um, so it's a wonderful community once you, uh, once you get to experience being there, it's a very supportive and wonderful community for sure. Okay, and uh, what is your next project now? It's something that you developed in this lab or something else? Um, well, right now I'm currently finishing a short film. Um, it's a short film called Veril. We're in uh, post-production right now. Um, it's, uh, it's about, uh, it, it's based in the rural uh, part of the country where I come from. And it's sort of uh, actually like a dark comedy in a way. It's a it's a bit of a an odd genre, kind of a genre film that again I just wasn't really expecting. It sort of came about that way, and it uh, one scene takes place in a diorama, so the visual effects are really complicated. That's what we're doing right now. So that film will probably be released actually for the twenty. We'll probably it'll be done in twenty twenty one. So we'll do the festival circuit for that, and that's actually going to be a film that instead of it being the pilot of a series, I'm kind of aiming it for it to be the last episode of a series. So that's what I'm writing right now. And um, about uh, women living on the plains of, of America and uh, life on the plains as a woman all the way from the turn of the century to present day. And that, yeah, so that's what I'm, I'm very much in this kind of odd, like super post-production phase right now, scoring, color correction, visual effects, and also in the writing phase, every single day in my writing, you know, discipline to um, the beginning. So it's really fun to be on those two bookends of the process and looking for an exciting t year of 2022, hoping that we'll be in festivals, looking at films on big screens again. Thank you. Welcome Svetlana. <laughs> Hi, how are you? <laughs> Um, so I thought, uh, Erin, that uh, you would be interested to make a documentary about Lily and uh, <laughs> her, her career and uh, as a musician and uh, I don't know, maybe her origins. It comes. Uh, I got my hands in a lot of different pots. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yes. It makes yes. it interesting. <laughs> yes, that's true. Uh, so Svetlana Semin is with us. Um, she's the director of Father Arseni, uh, the documentary. I think we had the, uh, the, the tra we saw the trailer a bit more. Welcome Svetlana. Would you like to unmute yourself? We like the lights, the sparkling <laughs> lights. Bring us in the uh, season uh, <laughs> spirit. <laughs> Maybe there, are, there is some music also, let's see. You can unmute yourself in order to hear Hold you. on a second. Oh, okay, so seven. I had a problem with my computer the, for the last few days because I had a bug and then the restart of the computer start, uh, it lasted maybe 17 hours. So everything got disconnected. I was very frustrated. In the meantime, uh, a lot of things are going on and all positive things in my work. And um, so I'm happy to see you. I'm not going to dwell on it. But uh, <laughs> uh, 
we are living in a new world, the world of uh, connecting through the, the technology and you realize sometimes it's so wonderful and easy, but if it doesn't happen, it has that down point where you, um, you really see how um, disconnected we can be, connected and disconnected. So mm -hmm. if you want to ask me some questions, please do, I don't know. <laughs> right yeah, now, okay. I'm very happy to see you again. Yes. Uh, thank you. Yeah, because uh, that's why I was wondering because you had the, the details also from uh, the previous festival. How to? I get loved it. it. Yeah. It was great. <laughs> okay. Was welcome really back. Great. Welcome back. Um, yeah, this is a new way to to communicate in in the festivals. I think uh, that we had this technology also in the past, but uh, we were not used. And uh, we prefer to, of course, the physical um, attendance and uh, meetings, physical meetings. Uh, but I think it's a privilege now that during the pandemic, uh, we can um, be in different uh, countries, in different areas, maybe in our home safe and uh, warm and uh, have the opportunity to participate in a festival. And when we will have now, I consider this as a luxury uh, to go to the theater. So <laughs> when we will have this in a luxury to go to, to the theater, uh, we will appreciate more. Uh, but yes, it is a way to get connected either uh, from mobile or uh, the laptop or the desktop. And uh, yeah, we create a bigger family, a bigger uh, network. <laughs> Let's see how this uh, will work. But in any case, we didn't want uh, to postpone or to cancel. In Cyprus last month, we had the privilege to, to, to have also public screenings, but not in Greece. All Greece is in lockdown. So next year, next year, I think uh, I, I want to do that, but I cannot promise uh, we will have uh, the, the screenings of this festival and the next festival uh, together. So, so I'm good at it. I wish you could do the festival in Hydra on my island in Greece. Because I tell you one thing, several years ago, I had an idea of starting up the festival there. Of course, I'm, I, I, I would never be able to do it for so many reasons. But it's a very artistic island. Lots of interesting people from all over the world. I mean, some of them, they have houses. Some of them, they are dedicated to Hydra every year. And culturally, it's very vivid. And we are missing a festival. So um, <laughs> I'd like to introduce you to our mayor, <laughs> George Kondalakis. Really, Petra, you should be uh, perfect for that. And, Thank uh, you. Thank uh, you for I the great idea. Hold on, hold on. For a few <laughs> days, is, even just three summer. Months, Yes. I live in Greece, mostly in Greece. I'm, this summer, I was invited to go to Franklin, to the festival. And I broke uh, my wrist, so I couldn't travel. But I, I went to Idra instead. So <laughs> it was the second Idra. time. So I, I, I realized that, what you talk about, that there is no festival. There are some <clears throat> exhibition rooms uh in the library and uh, but not a, a festival no, we I, know make a the festival. <laughs> I know a lot of people there uh, also huh? from the film industry like Panayotis Rapas he's a great, he's a great friend of mine you see you have yes. common friends and uh, I met the mayor of course yes. and uh, we must tell to our friends here that, that Leonard Cohen Yes, <laughs> the musician he has a, a house that it is my neighbor. Uh, you, he was my neighbor. You can, you can go and visit the house yeah. now, Leonard Cohen. Yeah. So this is a proposal. We will work on that. As well. Please yeah. support the proposal. So yeah. we would love to come. <laughs> so bravo! So we will have the screenings of Bridges International Film Festival yeah. in Idra. Let's find the venue. This well, is the problem only. You, it, also, it is an island. There is no uh, car. No. You go by by foot everywhere. When I had an idea, just to go about for one second uh, to organize this festival, of course, I didn't want to be 
uh, the one, uh, I just wanted to structurally uh, organize the festival for the sake of art and bringing more art into Hydra, getting uh, films, because many interesting filmmakers live in Hydra. You know, uh, Pavel Pavlovsky, he's also my neighbor. Um, there are people who come and they get inspired and, you know, so we, the mayor at that time was not elected mayor. He was um, just about to become elected. And he said, I will make a proposal, of course. And then we will uh, invite people to come for a few days and the hotels were going to give a very good discount to everyone who would come just for the festival. So there's a, there is a, some, um, uh, there is a small- We have cinema. some participants there. Already. Very nice cinema, uh, open air cinema. And then they have uh, rooms. We'll talk about after this um, uh, festival, but uh, I'm just so happy that I have finally connected because I tell you, few <laughs> days were very strange. Also in Greece, all over Greece, there are so beautiful places that uh, a festival can be done. Also in, uh, we do in May the, at Nafplio. But in any case, tell us about your film, Svetlana, <laughs> Father okay. and Sally. Finally, uh, the film I, I shot in a, a very, very short period of time, which is really <laughs> something unusual. Let's say no more than three days of work, two days, uh, two weeks and a half of editing. It's 42 minute film that is going to be shown, I think tomorrow. And it's an intimate portrait of a Serbian monk who used to be, um, a very uh, important uh, artist in the 80s, an avant-garde artist in Belgrade. Um, he has done lots of fabulous things. He was a painter, he was a musician, he was hanging out with, uh, with a, a group of um, very um, important artists at the time who were performing all sorts of things. And then he was also a dentist. He moved to New York he was very curious to live in America. And uh, he lived there for uh, several years and suddenly he vanished. And I knew of him, we were sort of friends, not really intimate friends, not great friends, but you know, from the same group of people. And then suddenly in uh, the beginning of June, 2018, he called me up and he said, this is Father Arseni and I said, Alexander, is that you? He said, no, you cannot call me that name anymore. And I said, oh, so what are you doing in New York? He said, I'm giving a lecture at the Greek church tomorrow in Chelsea. Please come for the lecture. And I said, no, we should just meet right away. You know, I cannot wait not to meet. So we met and we stayed for 11 hours. We were talking. I wish I had my camera at that moment. Because can you imagine when two people meet after 28 years? In the meantime, we had a war in our country. We lost a lot of friends that we knew uh, in common, you know. And we just went through a huge conversation about life, philosophy, choices, and all of that. And he looks fantastic. I mean, he's a very tall man. He's got a beautiful face, long beard. And the most importantly is that I could not believe how much his life story touched me right away. It just came to me. And it kind of made, made me stop with everything. I called up my crew, which normally I have to book like three months ahead because everybody's, I always like to work with same people. Everybody's doing something. We are all indie people. So you have to wait, you have to wait. And then I called them up at nine o'clock in the, in the evening. And I said, I know it's Saturday, but could you please come tomorrow at the Greek church? I want to film because Father Arseni had allowed me to film him, um, you know, and um, for me, that was a privilege. I said, I have to do that. And guess what? Everybody was ready waiting for me at 11 o'clock in the morning. The next day, I could not believe it. I was very, very, but at the same time, you know, at this point, everything happens for the reason, I, I believe. And, and um, that story just landed um, in the middle of all my, my other projects. We filmed in New York uh, in the church and that footage I didn't want to take. 
because I realized that actually Father Arseny is um, been followed by more than half a million people around the world. And you can see his lectures from different churches around the world in London, in Australia, and all of that. I had no idea because he never showed any of his um, achievements to me. He only talked about why he had become a monk and what had happened to him the moment he had become a monk. So for me, who does documentary films based on artist stories, true artist, authentic stories, this was incredible because I said, I. I still see him as an artist, but now he's in a completely different place. And I am very much interested in spirituality. I believe that there is a great link between creativity and spirituality. And I admire everyone who does the same, no matter where they come from, if they're authentic to it, instead of uh, preaching, instead of uh, trying to convince people in their beliefs. I believe that we all have to find our beliefs especially for our sensitivity as working with a very sensitive material. I mean, film, theater, that's where I come from, is the most intimate connection that I, I experience. <laughs> uh, that's, that's why I need to explore it more because it brings me closer and closer to the truth. And his truth really started to resonate with me. So we went to the places in Manhattan where, um, at that time, he was called Alexander Ivanovich, the same last name as mine before I got married. He lived, he did different things. So we filmed that. And then I said, I cannot stop here. I have to go and see the rest of the story. I knew that he was in monastery uh, Ribnica, which has been completely destroyed uh, by the Turks in 1830 or 32. Um, and all the monks, more than 40 monks were killed and burned. And uh, there is a very tragic situation that um, uh, no one wanted to de deal with it because it involved a lot of money in restoration. But Father Arseny had put all the money that he gained in his lectures throughout the world because people paid for his lectures and they bought his books. And he had made incredible resurrection of that spiritual center. Um, I did not know until I got there. And I got there in uh, February, 2019. I even brought the mother of Father Arseny with us. So she's in the film. And I will lead you to the story just in the way that um, it's not fair to discover too much but I say uh, with his confessions, <laughs> it was almost incredible. I never expected to get anything out of any documentary. He had given us his whole life, his family story in a, such a way that um, I thought I didn't need to film it anymore. Once I, I, I got out of the monastery, I just went straight to the editing room and it was a labor of love. I did this for, not for money. I didn't care. I put my uh, money into it. And uh, surprisingly enough, this film is doing so great <laughs> in my country. And it's going to different festivals. I'm really, really very, very happy that uh, for the second time I'm mm -hmm. with you, you're supporting this I, film and thank I, you. I have a question, uh, Svetlana. Uh, you are experienced uh, doing documentaries. Uh, do you think uh, to to make also fiction film? Yes, okay. yes, that's my next project. I think I, I um, after working with someone like Father Arseny, this is what I was trying to explain before. I touched the ultimate truth of something that it was so profoundly challenging. And it changed me and I, and I got what I needed as, as a documentary filmmaker. I could repeat, you know, like when you make a very nice painting and then you want to do it better, but you don't need to do a painting maybe anymore. Maybe you go into something else. And the, my idea is to go into discovery of the roots uh, through um, uh, a story that I had written many years ago and um, it's a story uh, based on immigration. But, you know, we all try to run away from something. 
And for me, it's now going back home. And uh, the way we'll execute this story would be very specific. A lot of metaphors I like to use, but the real uh, feature film, yeah, I'm working on it. That's why I'm in Belgrade. I just met with my producer yesterday. So you are in Serbia right now? Yes, I'm in Serbia. I'm still in Serbia. <laughs> and uh, the rest of you, you are in the United States right now? Yeah, yeah. My, um, my studio and my work is in New York. I have a production company in Brooklyn called Sixth mm -hmm. Tenth Film. And um, so I made seven artist uh, portraits. I like the number seven and Father Arseny just got into that cycle. Um, as the you know most most um, remarkable <laughs> situation that we have now uh, completed all of it. The next year, after the festival runs with the, this film and the other film Psyche, uh, Saint Clair Semin Psyche, I will uh, start um, building the feature film. Um, Do you know the title? Yes, yes, but I'm I'm a, I'm a little bit um, now I'm a little bit um, I always go back to it. In English, it's called Alma's Brain, um, but in my uh, own language, it is Alma's Brain. It's about a woman who had suffered a brain injury, and uh, and from the moment on, all the success and all her uh, life stories that she had uh, created for herself were meaningless. So she was really trying to find her true self. And she did not know actually when she realized uh, inside that who she was anymore. <laughs> and I think that happens to us a lot. Okay, thank you. Well, Kim, we would like to hear more about you, about your work. Thank you. And thank your future uh, plan. And you can unmute yourself also. Yes, yes. thank you. Um, well, we, we finished this documentary, I think, February 2020, right when COVID hit. So um, this year has just been dedicated to this film, and it's going to come out early January, I think, or the end of January. And um, we made it to, we're hoping to raise money awareness. It's going to go right back to help the people who are, who are in the film in the, the same the same refugee camp. Um, I don't have any plans yet. This was this was something I, I had to make and made it and I'm just gonna wait and see. It took a lot of time, a lot of work. So I'm gonna wait and see where my energy is gonna go next, but um, enjoying finishing up the year. It's been a long year. <laughs> Kim, where are you from? Um, originally? Yes. I'm originally from Texas. Oh, nice, Houston? Yeah. I Really? Yeah, I, I've traveled a lot though, so I my accent might be gone. <laughs> I hide it. I, I have relatives in Houston. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Wonderful. Greek are everywhere. <laughs> yes, are I have many Greek friends. Been to Greece several times. Wonderful, wonderful place. Oh, really? Bravo. Yes. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Okay, um, what other subjects um, are you interested in? One is immigration, for some for, reason. For uh, me? Yes, for your team. I think this actually also goes back to what Lily was talking about. Um, for me, this a lot of the stories that I cover are about women and children, and it, and it was very hard for me to, um, it was just sort of the, the worst of what was happening to women and children. And I, and I felt for that and I just, I wanted to support them. And um, I just, I just, um, I have a long history of, of working with children and education and I really just wanted to help in that area. So I don't know if like moving forward, the next project will be that, but that will definitely always be something that is a, is a high priority for me to work on whatever it is. Very nice. It's a great inspiration, women and children. <laughs> it's the present and the future. Yes. Of course. <laughs> Lily, tell us more about your music. And I mm -hmm. don't know if you mind if we can share a, a clip or maybe of your uh, work. What do you think? Um, you're, you're welcome to. 
Okay. Of course, it's out in the it's out in the world. So once it's out there, I I have no control over it. That's one of the things that we all have in common, right? You you make a decision to offer up something of yourself uh, in the form of a film or a story or a piece of music, mm -hmm. and uh, yes. then how then long do you have the world. Band and or you play music for how long? Well, I mean, I've uh, I've played music for. A long time, but uh, I did not take the step of building a band until about five, five years ago, five and a half years ago or so. And uh, that's a process. I love collaboration. I love working with people who are similarly inspired. I love learning from others. And um, I love trying to take the idea in my mind and set it on the path to making it a reality. Of course, where, where it ends up is always very different and generally far more interesting than where it started. But um, so that, so the, you know, the band, it came out of writing stories. I see all of this as a piece, right? It's all storytelling on a certain level and it's all for me and maybe, you know, something Svetlana said really resonated with me it's a it's a it is a journey and for me it's a journey of um an expression of love and uh it takes many shapes and forms and uh, it's an exploration and sometimes you connect with people really well and beautifully like Svetlana said she didn't anticipate her film doing as well as it did uh but it is because it's connecting with people, you know, and Kim's uh, passion for advocacy, you know, is manifested in this film as well, you know, and I know, you know, Aaron's imagination is so, you know, you, when you visit Erin in her house, I just have to say, you know, she has her children, she has her books, she has things pasted on the walls, telling stories. It's the expression of a creative mind. And I'm not sure where I'm going with all this, but I think the band, to come back to your question, is, it's just another manifestation of connection. Exactly. Uh, do you write uh, the lyrics and uh, the music also? I write the lyrics. Mm -hmm. I start off with a melody. I come up with a melody and some ideas. And then the exciting part happens, which is I meet with the band. And I say, hey, <laughs> I came up with this. What do you think? And sometimes, you know, the reaction is, hmm. <laughs> Other times the reaction is immediate and we engage one another and we start to play. We play, you know, I think anybody in the arts, one of the things you love, you love to play. That's where so many great ideas come from, improvisation, right? Hearing someone else's thoughts is a form of improvisation because it gets all those, you know, ideas going in your own head. So yeah, and then we collaborate. We collaborate and come up with uh, the right sound. Yeah, do you have a permanent band or? Now is there's a core of four of us. And, you know, I'd like to say they're all six of us, but you know, people come in and out. Yes. It's like with a production team, right? You know, there are people you absolutely want to have on that team because it facil you have a way of communicating. And then there are people that come in and out and in and out and um, makes it interesting. Uh, where are you located? Uh, I live in Montclair, New Jersey. So. Yes. Yeah, and Erin lives in New Jersey too? Okay. A couple times over, you're on mute. I, I, yeah, but yeah, I I've been in I was been in Brooklyn. I went to school. I went to film school in New York and been in Brooklyn for a long time. And then had twins, and got some more space in New Jersey. So yeah, just just a hop, skip, and a jump from Manhattan. Yeah, I know, I know. 
I was, uh, I had the company, but now we shut it down in Saddlebrook. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Uh, so, Kim, where, uh, where are you right now? Where do you live? Maybe you told us before, but I don't remember. I'm in Florida right now. Ah, in Florida. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. <laughs> it's warmer there. It is. Yeah. I heard that New York had snow last night. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Big storm? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, lots of snow. Yeah. yeah. Lots of snow up here. Yeah. Amazing. Which is why I'm like, I didn't, you know, I feel like it's not warm enough now. I'm kind of bringing the snow. <laughs> Okay, um, so uh, Erin, uh, you told us what uh, is your uh, next project? Yes. Yep. You, yeah. Okay, but how was the pandemic for you? What did you do the uh, the last months? You yeah, working, it's been you know? it's been rough. Yeah, we had you know multiple productions and shoots were completely canceled. Um, I mean, I'm a freelancer. I'm most, and I'm, an, you know, an indie filmmaker focusing on writing and directing. And so I do gigs, you know, for a lot of times I produce and, um, and it, with documentary, I feel like you kind of, at least I tend to wear a lot of hats shooting and a lot of shooting and a lot of editing also, but usually for work, work where I'm, you know, earning money, I'm usually produce. Or direct and it just so many shoots were were canceled and so I just I kind of took the opportunity since I'm have two kids at home and I'm educating them their school is closed my husband is a touring musician in fact we were going to go to Greece he had a tour that was taking him to Greece last year with his band Snarky Puppy and the whole war, like world tour was canceled so I didn't get to go to Greece unfortunately and um so because he's used to traveling, everything has been shut down for him. So it's it's rough being two artists in a pandemic in the US. Um, it's rough. And so, you know, it's been, it's been a time for not a lot of income generation, but it's also been great for writing because I'm writing every day and I'm I'm just sort of focused. It's it's I actually got quite ill with COVID and I was um, out for about two or three months. And um, there was a real uh, awakening that happened during that time. And so this kind of finding purpose and looking inward and um, really figuring out what is the world going to be like after this? And what am I as an artist going to be doing? And how am I gonna be participating in this shift that we're all going through? And so having the time to do that is actually pretty, um, pretty incredible to not have all these obligations and be like, oh, well, I can't say no to things because they're not happening. So rather than hustling for trying to get on a commercial gig that will get me somewhere, you know, in, in the next month or two, I'm going to say no to that and be safe and just go inward and keep writing. And so it's it's been both stressful for health reasons, for financial reasons, but now that I have my health back, um, I feel fortunate to be in this incubation period and embracing that. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, I will change the question now. <laughs> uh, what positive things uh, did happen to you, uh, Lily, <laughs> during the pandemic? That's a very difficult question. <laughs> Um, yeah, you have to think otherwise. <laughs> well, more quiet allows for more contemplation of nature and beauty and, as Aaron said, purpose. But I would give that up in an instant. not to have seen so many people suffer and die needlessly. So I can always find some kind of hope, <laughs> but I refuse to see this as a positive in any meaningful yeah. way because there's I so much tragedy. It has meaning in your life, in your daily life, because there, there are changes in our lives. But yeah, I mean, also, we, there are some positive things that were. 
Yeah, I, I, yeah, you know, I think that, um, <laughs> there are some positive things, <laughs> but there are, you know, there's a positive thing. There's a positive thing. Uh, is my faith in the adaptability of human nature, of the kindness capable in people's hearts exists. Science is real. <laughs> and, you know, the, uh, the degree to which scientists and all of the organizations, all of the elements that support the development of a vaccine, for example, that that happened in such a short period of time, that's going to move medicine and science and the ability to help patients who are critically ill, that's going to move the needle in a meaningful way. It's come at a tremendous cost. But I'm encouraged by the, the better angels mm -hmm. that have um, supported people in need, that have worn a mask. <laughs> I'll just go ahead and say it. And, you know, and who, who try to move the world forward in a compassionate way. Okay. I know that may not have been the answer you were looking for, but that's what I have to offer. Okay. Kim? Do you have something positive to share uh, with us from the pandemic that happened to you or you realized? I, I think from a work point of view, I had a lot of time to work on um, social media, getting my message out, um, reading what other people were doing, listening to conferences. I feel like I learned a lot. Um, I had a lot of time to listen to Zoom calls and panels that were happening across the world that I don't think the year before I would have been, I wouldn't even have known about. So that was educational for me. I, I feel like I, I feel like I learned a lot from just researching and listening to other activists and following how other people were working and trying to solve problems. So that was, that was a good part for me. I learned a lot. Yeah. For me too, it was very educational, this period. Also, I learned how to do compost in my veranda. And uh, now to, to have this Zoom meeting <laughs> and try to, to, to organize the festival uh, virtual. So Svetlana, what uh, you have to share with us about the pandemic, something positive? What happened to you? Well, I, I arrived in Greece uh, in, um, it was- You uh, traveled a lot, a lot during the pandemic. It was no, actually, I was going to meet my husband. I have not seen my husband for three months mm -hmm. and he came from New York. My husband is a Brazilian artist. He came from New York. It was our 20th uh, anniversary. I said, let's take a little break. We go to our island, Hydra for two weeks. And the third day that we were there, uh, we, we, we were in a lockdown and we couldn't leave the island for six months. I mean, it was amazing. And, um, you know, I didn't panic one moment except that our daughter studies in, 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 in Edinburgh and it is our only child, she's 20. So we couldn't see Sarah, I couldn't see her for about seven months from, uh, in, from January. But um, all together. And that was very hard for me. Um, in another way, it was very good for me to realize how much I was missing contact with nature and um, a, a normal, simple life that I had with my husband. And because we work and we travel all the time and it's kind of crazy. It became very strenuous. Neither one of us is very young, but we're terribly passionate about what we do. So we respect that about each other. That's how we function. Suddenly I was happy to be with my husband and I was happy to be in Greece. I mean, this is 
I wouldn't say second home. It's like my only home where I feel at home. Everywhere else, I'm like a passenger. And the people were super nice. I mean, that was great. But the yeah. moment I came here to present my film in Belgrade, it was also very strange because uh, here they carried on a Bell Dogs Film Festival, a documentary film festival. My film, surprisingly enough, became like a number one film from the festival. So the film started to travel all over Serbia and came back to Belgrade. And I think I was so exhausted from giving interviews and from working so much. Now from here, my husband went back to New York, our daughter again to Edinburgh. Suddenly I got COVID. Oh my gosh. And I'm recovering. And I tell you, alone, totally alone. Oh I know. That's why you didn't come to Cyprus. We had a yes. screening of your. I was going to go, but I, I just got a very good results from my uh, doctor. The last results I had a few days ago, and um, I'm very happy about that. I'll be able to travel to go on the plane next month, mid January. I think I'll be able to travel, but reevaluation of everything, even though it's very hard. But as my friend producer from Belgrade told me, Snezhana, she had to deal with a huge cast. They were shooting all the time in spite of Corona because they were doing a TV series. Mm -hmm. And she said there were so many crazy people acting out, the actors, the people from the set, the people were getting sick. She had to go through a lot. Mm -hmm. She is a beautiful and kind and, and very calm human being. For her to say such thing, it's a lot. And that made me realize that it is positive, this pain that I went through. For me, for my personal growth, for knowing what's really real and not to have such expectation as I used to have, for me, that's positive because I, I'm in deep inside, very naive and very childlike a person, you know? And sometimes it's that's just not good enough. I have to be more um, of another side of me. And I think it gave me that stretch to think about me wanting to really see myself as a, a helping, continuously helping, but not everybody. Because giving so much of your energy to so many people all the time, it's not good for your art and for your soul anymore. Mm -hmm. so I learned that lesson. So more self, you know, contain and thinking about in the right way, how to make another project which will be meaningful. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I like this what you said, but I think all all of all of you you are <laughs> doing that. Uh, so before we we conclude this uh, discussion, Kim, I want something more from you to tell us about the children, your cause with the children, and maybe. Next year, we'll collaborate all together, do some screenings in Idra. Maybe we have a concert uh, of Lily and her band, and it will be for a cause for children. Tell us more about that. Your involvement with women and children. Um, you didn't tell everything. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> um, I, I just, I. <laughs> um, so I was a teacher for years, um, again, in the Middle East, and then um, I have lots of children. <laughs> so um, just always working with them and, and trying to figure out ways like I, I really enjoy photography and taking pictures like sports photography and, and just little things that that can make people happy, you know, and um, as far as back to the movie, um, there's a lot of kids who went through some very serious trauma and um, orphans, hundreds of children who don't have that support and don't have that family and um, just trying to find ways to support them. And, um, you know, they deserve, everybody deserves to have that love and support and, and finding ways to make sure just the bare essentials are taken care of. I mean, food, blankets, having feeling that safety and security that was that's really just something that i think you know worldwide regardless needs to be worked on and and it, even with the pandemic it really was shown 
the world can change. And when you make something a priority, it happens. And, and why aren't we doing this for other causes? So um, on the one hand, it's hopeful that it, things can change, but um, people really have to care about it and insist on it. So, so that's where I'm trying to, you know, keep pushing for the causes, the cause. Yeah, in which areas uh, you worked in the Middle East? I was in Jordan for about two years, two, three years. And I travel all around to the countries there. And um, it was a long time ago, so things have changed a lot since then, especially with all the conflict that's going on in the region. But it's always been something that's interesting to me and, and I just keep following, so. Okay, great, great. So, uh, would you like to add something before we listen the, the spoiler of the concert in Idra for next year? <laughs> See what, what <laughs> is the title? <laughs> so, what she wants, what Erin wants, what uh, Lily wants, she will sing that. Uh, what uh, Svetlana wants. <laughs> Let's visualize what we want. <laughs> what I want to do something all together for mm -hmm. children. <laughs> well, you know, I have to say thank you for, for bringing us together. This is, I do have more positive things to say. <laughs> <laughs> One of them is truly to, uh, to, to hear from other people, it's hopeful. Hear from other artists and, um, you know, this opportunity to learn uh, from you is, is generous. So thank you. I really appreciate it. Great, thank you. You gave us the inspiration. <laughs> Erin? Um, wait, what's the question? What do I want? <laughs> what do I visualize for this collaboration? <laughs> yeah. mm, 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 mm. Well, um, Yes, a concert is lovely. Music is always good. Um, helping women and children. I'm a, I come from a world of choreography and dance and um, I am especially interested now in um, embodied living and using your listening to your body before your cerebral cortex all the time, letting that guide your um, inspiration and listening to your intuition which is, can be found deeply in your body and your nervous system. And I've been studying and working on this for a very long time. And it's interesting after, through the pandemic, certain work that I've been doing to heal myself has also been work that has gotten me very clear on what I wanna write about. And it all comes from the body. And I think when you say women and children, it's all about that. And so the more that we can bring embodied experiences and sort of intuition to our projects, whether we're deciding on the next topic or the next project or the way that we communicate with others and the way we decide to record behaviors mm -hmm. and show perspectives of behaviors, it is up to us to bring our whole selves to those experiences so that the world sees work that is at a level that's beyond where we are even now. Mm -hmm. And I do think that a group of women like this are in the forefront of making these kinds of things happening, happen where there's just more wholeness and connection to every part and every, every understanding of why we're here and why we're doing what we're doing. It's about collective. It's not just individualism. It's the collective of lifting everyone up. And um, so, yeah, concert, um, beautiful images to connect to people and causes um, and changing the world for women and children. And therefore, every, everything will be changed if it's changed for women and children. We're, 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 on, a, we're on the right track. Specifics, let's work on that this year. <laughs> Can't go there right now. I'll talk too much. Thank you, Erin. Erin wants to change the world for the better. And Svetlana. Look, I, I, I really Svetlana would like- Svetlana wants a festival in Idra. This is done. Yes. 
So I what mean, is the plan at once? <laughs> This has been my dream for so many years, and now I think I found the perfect match. I mean, Petra was like the highlight of my whole experience here. I tell you, I, I followed uh, Cyprus uh, Film Festival. It was so great to, you know, to feel, I mean, as you said in the very beginning of our conversation, we connect, and this is a great opportunity. It's actually privileged. If it wasn't for Corona, we would, I would never imagine, you know, let me go online and how I'm always busy with something else. And I don't listen to what people have to say if they're on the screen. I, I listen to them if they're on the stage or in front of me. It's the kind of thing that we pay attention. And this was a very good, um, you know, boost of energy for me. So now I, I want further. I want you to guys come to Hydra this summer because it's a fantastic year, 200 years of liberation um, against the Turks. And so we're going to have festivals every single, not just week, day. Uh, I'm going to have my retrospective. Um, I already shown some of my films in Hydra, but now, you know, I, I feel like I'm really part of that cultural scene. And the cultural scene in Hydra is very specific. It's beautiful. So you guys should definitely try to come. We should do it, huh, Petra? <laughs> so thank you very much. Uh, be healthy, stay healthy, stay safe, and be inspired. See thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful to meet everyone. Thank you so much. OK, bye-bye. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Yeah. 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 It was late. Every day we are here at eight o'clock and also on Christmas Day. We will oh, be that's here. good. Okay. Um, let's okay. celebrate. <laughs> so let's enjoy what she wants what. <laughs> <laughs> By Lily Vakili. What is the name of the band? The Lily Vakili band. <laughs> Lily Vakili band. Yeah. I'm the original. Oh. I know. 